In this video, we will be going over the process of setting up a ZFS HA cluster using TrueNAS. This process differs slightly from the usual installation of RSF1, and we will be going over these differences in this video. For the rest of the process in full, you can view the videos already on the channel, going over the setup of a ZFS HA cluster with shared storage or with non-shared storage. Links to these videos will be in the description and on the end screen of this video. The first step is to ensure that the TrueNAS system configuration is saved to the boot pool, as this cannot be saved to any pool that you want to cluster. To do this, head to System and then Advanced Settings in the TrueNAS GUI, scroll down to the Storage section and click Configure to set where the system dataset pool is stored. Make sure that the boot pool is selected from the drop-down menu and then click Save. If the boot pool was already selected, make sure to save this option still as this will make it permanent and ensure that system config data is not saved on any other pool in the future. These steps must be completed on both nodes. Next, we need to update the TrueNAS hostname database with static entries for the cluster nodes being used. This step removes any reliance on external services for hostname lockup. To do so, in the TrueNAS GUI, head to Network on the left-hand sidebar and then click on Settings in the Global Configuration section of this page. From here, you can update the TrueNAS hostname database with static entries for the cluster nodes. Again, this must be done on both nodes and should have entries for all cluster nodes in the format shown on screen. We can now download and install the RSF1 installation tool with the following steps needing to be completed on each node. You can do this either side by side or one at a time. Start a command shell by heading to System and then clicking on Shell in the TrueNAS GUI and then make sure that you are logged in with root privileges rather than admin. Once this is done, you can download the RSF1 installation tool and checksum file from the high availability website using the following wget commands shown on screen. These commands, and any additional commands needed for this process, can be copied directly from the description of this video, or from the TrueNAS scale section of the High Availability Documentation Hub. Next, we need to make sure that the checksum of the installer matches with the downloaded checksum file as shown on screen. Once you've confirmed these numbers match, you can then proceed to uncompress the installer using gunzip like so, and once this file is uncompressed, you're then ready to proceed with the installation of RSF1. Use the command on screen to run the RSF1 installer and select option 1 to download and install the correct RSF1 package for the version of TrueNAS running on this node. The installer will then download the RSF1 package, create a dataset in the boot pool of the machine mounted to slash opt slash HAC, which allows the RSF1 directory to be remounted after an update to TrueNAS, installs BC, a required dependency, and installs RSF1 onto the slash opt slash HAC dataset. Once this has been done on both nodes, if you haven't already created your cluster storage pools, then you need to do so now. For shared storage clusters, this only has to be completed on one of the cluster nodes using the TrueNAS GUI, and this must be done using only drives from the shared storage. If creating a shared nothing cluster, a cluster using non-shared storage, this must be done on each individual node due to storage not being shared. The structure and capacities of the storage in these pools should match. In order to avoid any future complications, and most importantly, the names of the pools must match. The final step that needs to be completed on the TrueNAS GUI is to generate API keys for each node in order for RSF1 to be able to orchestrate import and export using the TrueNAS API. To do this, in the top right hand corner of the TrueNAS GUI, click on the profile name and then select API keys. Once the following page loads, click on add in the top right hand corner and then input a name for the API key that you're going to generate. Click on save, and this will then generate the API key that you need for this node. This must be done on each node, and you'll need to take a copy of the API keys as they will be needed in the next step. Speaking of which, you now need to head over to the RSF1 web app to complete the setup process. To do so, type in your hostname, followed by a colon, and the port number 8330. 
All of the steps from this point forwards are the same as detailed in our shared storage and shared nothing videos with one additional step. When creating a cluster, you will be asked for the API keys generated earlier. So add the API keys in the space provided for their respective nodes. Click on test API keys in order to ensure that everything is set up correctly. We've now gone over all of the additional steps needed when setting up an RSF1 cluster using TrueNAS. From this point onwards, you can follow the step-by-step -step guides in our shared storage and shared nothing videos. If you require any further information regarding this process, this can be found on the High Availability Documentation Hub with a link in the description. Thank you for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future updates.